Here I am. I had to film a mascara tutorial situation. Mm -hmm. It's for a new product and I basically just did a tutorial for it and I love it. I've been using it. So many secrets. I'm so sorry that I have to keep so many secrets from all of you, um, but that just means that I'm able to try it out for months. Months. I, this one product that I just filmed, you'll see it soon. I have been using it since October. October. Wow. But today I thought we could just use some products that are very no makeup makeup, very no makeup makeup, um, since I already have brows and mascara on. But before we get started, I want to talk about how much I love this lip treatment here from Ula Hemrickson. I love it. I have been using this since it came two weeks ago. And whenever I sit down, this is actually important, especially for lipstick application. The moment I sit down to do my makeup, I immediately put lip balm on. Um, but this one right here, it's really, really nice. It's very light, but it's very hydrating. And I know that sounds kind of repetitive and we hear it all the time. But sometimes when lip balms are too balmy, um, lipstick doesn't pair with them later. It can be a little too greasy and move everything around too much. But by the time I'm finished, this has really kind of just sunk in and sat there and lipstick and lip liner go over this beautifully. So A plus. Okay, so I was going to show something. And I don't even wanna show what it is now because I cannot find it anywhere um, on the internet. <laughs> Does that mean something happened with it? See, I always like to do my research before I even show y'all things because I would hate to come on here and be like, oh, this is amazing. And then you can't even find it. And then it was recalled. So I'm going to do more research on that before I talk about it. Um, let's talk about something else. So I was gifted the KBD, the new foundation. Now, most of you already know that I am not a yellow undertone. And you know, I'm going to do some more videos on undertones. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that. Um, this is not my undertone and I just feel like I wish brands would just just look at me <laughs> Please, I'm happy to go buy it um, But I do want I wanted to look at it in person just to kind of swatch a couple in my range that helps me tell you more so I'm waiting for it to get to my Sephora, but dear brands I think that I put out enough content for you to come and tap through my story and to be like, oh, she's pinker than a flamingo. She's not a yellow banana. That being said, recently I've just been purchasing a lot because I also feel like brands, uh, no complaints, I would never complain. I don't even show the PR that I get, but I feel like um, they take a little bit longer to get to me and I know that we wanna see the review, so I just go purchase it. Um, I'm gonna swatch this for you just so you can kind of see the shade anyways. This is medium 039. And the moment it's at my Sephora store, I'll get it and try it and do the wear test. Banana and pajama. It, it feels nice though, it feels weightless. I'm gonna let it dry down. I'm just gonna let it sit there and hang out. We're just hanging out with a little yellow spot on our face. While that is sitting there, let's try out this NARS powder. I did buy this. See, I always make sure I tell y'all that. Um, I, I, I really want to start telling y'all what was sent to me, um, but since I do what I do, I assume that y'all know that most things are sent to me, but I, I'm going to start telling y'all because I just, I want to be as truthful as possible. I'm never hiding anything, <laughs> but I did buy this. This is the NARS. This is their soft matte advanced perfecting powder. So this is more of a finishing powder, but I just want to see what happens when I just apply it. I have nothing underneath my eye. Ooh, it's got a little bit of coverage. That's pretty and blurring. Picked up a little bit more using the side of the brush. That looks really nice. Keep in mind, I do have my Elemis oil underneath my eye right now. Very subtle. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to leave a link here because that brush that y'all have been seeing that I use for foundation, listen, it's coming real soon, sooner than you think. Listen, mm -hmm. and you might wanna sign up for emails because you don't wanna miss out. At this point, y'all are absolutely feral and, and y'all sell things out. So don't miss it. That way you get the email. Don't let it sell out. 
I never thought I could say that about my things, but thank you. Y'all are amazing, but uh, I, just, I don't want any of y'all to miss out because we've been watching that prototype for a long time. <laughs> now back to fluffing this around. Notice that I'm picking up just on the side of the brush. That way I can still kind of build it up. Even though this is a fluffy brush, I can get more coverage and pack it on. This is a really nice blurring powder. I'm so glad I picked this up. It is still very translucent. So I think I could have worn the lighter shade and even a shade darker. I think I typed out the shade. I'm wearing shade Creek, like a tributary. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is nice. Very easy. I wanna see it on top of makeup too. Obviously we'll do that tomorrow. But I still have a few more things that I need to film today, so I thought a no makeup makeup situation would be fun. Plus I know that I literally had hearts on my face and eyes yesterday. <laughs> Pretty. Okay, so this should be dry now. Hey, it is, see? It's not moving from there. That's kind of cool. Wow, once it dries, it's... This is going to take a little bit of education though, y'all. We could be having issues with this. I bet this is going to get really bad reviews. Hopefully not because I'm, I need to go with my shade. Y'all need to learn how to use this one. This one's gonna take a little bit of help. Let's be looking at it. That's, it's, that's good. I mean, this is very good, but this can be very, very difficult, but not once we figure it out together. And I already know about these formulas, but some of you might, some of you probably do. Y'all are probably way more advanced than me, but this can be a very difficult, but then a very useful formula. Stay tuned, XOXO, Gossip Girl. So I also purchased this. I happened to walk by a Sephora the other day and I looked at Ben and he looked at me and I looked at him and then we just walked in. <laughs> so this is one of the new highlighters from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, I actually did, I got to use my own trick when I picked it out. I was like, this is so cool. It works every single time. That is where we take it and we put it on the back of our hand. And if it disappears, see how it disappears? We still see the sparkle, um, but if it disappears, that's gonna be your perfect shade. I've talked about this quite a bit, but I have a lot of new supporters. Um, we're almost to 1.1 million, what the heck? Back to the highlighter. So it does look quite pretty, um, it does seem to be very, let me think of a way to put this. I, I'm so careful with how I pick words because saying powdery, that could be bad. But what I am seeing is that it's very raised on the skin. It doesn't sit flush against the skin. You can kind of just see it fluffing there. That doesn't mean it's bad, um, but that does mean it's a little bit heavier product. And you might be thinking, well, heavy isn't a good adjective either. Um, that could be a very negative adjective, but it's really not. To get this much glow, the product does have to be a little bit thicker. That's not a bad thing. Um, but if you have lots of texture or peach fuzz, which is completely natural, a formula like this, just like it's doing here with my um, arm here. Don't you judge me. But what it's gonna do, it's actually, it's going to enhance that no matter what. I don't care how much oil I put under there and I, I it just, it is what it is. But highlighters can be so beautiful on the skin. To get a highlighter this bright, the pigments do have to be a little heavier. I am gonna kind of push it into the skin. And I try to avoid this little dip. See how this is connecting there? I try to avoid that because it'll just enhance that. So I'm so specific where I put my highlighters. And again, we'll have to try this with foundation on. I just have that little bit of powder on. But you do see that it does pretty much disappear when the light is not hitting it. <laughs> it is pretty, but I don't have peach fuzz. And I don't have a ton of texture through there. Obviously you are gonna see my pores a little bit more. No highlighter there. And then here's our highlighter. But it's beautiful. This is so pretty. 
And then I bought more of these. I bought the shades I don't have. This is Golden Hour. I think this one has a little bit of glow. Yeah, it's a diffused set. Try to get this open. We're not just about to break one of these precious little Valentine's Day nails. And also, we're gonna have to pry this open because the, I absolutely adore this formula and the packaging is so pretty, but I have to pry it open with something else to get into it. Oh, that's pretty. Mm-hmm, that is beautiful. You can see that little bit of sheen to it. I'm, I'm so excited. Again, this is the shade Golden Hour. And then this one is a matte. I'm trying to double check. I should have read the box. That looks like a matte. I don't want to mislead you. I should have looked at the box, but I already put it in the recycling. Um, this is Tequila Sunset. I'm excited. This looks so summery and peachy. I think I'm in the mood for some real peachy blushes this year. Packaging's so pretty, but goodness gracious to open it is Chaos. I'm gonna draw on a quick little wing. I love this one from Stila, the brown. I love the brown. Um, it's such a beautiful shade of brown. And I also like this one's dual ended. I wish Valentino would come out with a brown liner, but I love this formula and how tiny that is. So I can just do a little bit of a baby wing. It's just like a little lash extension out there. And you know what? I find I find it's easier to do just a little baby wing like this. Just a little bit of a lift, just a little fifth. I find it easier to do it after mascara. Try that. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this powder. Just even out my skin tone a little bit. Just a smidgey. I don't want to lose my glow. I, I, you know what? I should probably put a highlighter on the other side. See if the powder kind of smooths it it kind of does a little bit hey a little bit of this on top of the highlighters i'm not saying to go get the highlighter or this but maybe a little bit of finishing powder on top i feel like i've tried that before but i feel like it kind of reminded me that it that looks that looks nice Meh. okay i evened it out but now i'm just going to use whatever's left just to kind of press it in i can't wait to try this technique when we get our foundation on I love makeup. Now let's cover our entire existence with this shade. This is the Tequila Sunrise shade. We have it there on the brush. I'm not even gonna do bronzer. That looks so natural. That actually looks like what I look like when I'm blushing, which is all, all the time with these red cheeks I got going on. I had to go and name me Rosie. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna use whatever's left here where the sun naturally hits a little across my nose just to look nice and fresh. Very sunny, very springy. I got so excited, y'all. I do live in a warm climate. I live in Houston. I actually live south of Houston, very close to the water. It's very tropical, but it can get chilly if a cold front blows in. Um, but birds do migrate away from here and my doves are back and I want to start opening my window and I think that I'm going to start doing a few tutorials in natural sunlight, which I know we love natural sunlight, but do keep in mind that natural sunlight can even be more flattering than this light that I have here. I don't use a ring light. I use a direct aggressive light. So one of the reasons I don't use sunlight is because it can be very flattering. Um, so, but I think a few of them will be okay as long as we're not doing like a product testing situation. Moral of the story is that all of my dubs and birds and all of the things that I love to listen to, everything is back. I could have just said that. We, we, we just got off a little bit there. I love animals, in case you didn't know. So we're putting on this NYX. This is Milky Gloss and the shade I'm using is called Milk It. And I love this formula because it's very clouded, very blurring. And it's so comfortable and I have a lot of it too. Um, and it's still so comfortable. And it, it's also this particular color, it, 
they're very pretty on top of lipsticks. But this particular color has a lot of blue, a lot of lavender, which is gonna even brighten up your smile. Um, blue brightens up your teeth, in case you didn't know. And then I love these. I have used these quite a few times and they wear beautifully. They do not crack, they do not move. And I just think they're so much fun just to add a little bit of spice. The one I'm using, it's, it's what's it called? It's called Lilac Link. And I just feel like that's so springy and so pretty and you can even layer them and they don't. I'm telling y'all, these are fantastic and they're so affordable. 10 out of a 10 would recommend. All right, friends, I think that's, I think that's going to be it today. This was really fun. Just kind of sitting down and testing out things, looking at undertones, figuring out what's going on with what. This was fun. Now I'm going to go wash this hair. And then I'm going to come back and film some more stuff. I have some fun ideas that I think y'all might enjoy. All right. I love y'all so much and I'll see you in the comments tonight. We're going to start talking about undertones and this is going to be a very basic video, kind of an intro. I'm going to swatch a few foundations and I want you to pick the shade that you think matches. Don't feel bad if you pick the wrong shade. This took me so long to figure out. We're just here to learn. But we have warm, cool, olive, neutral. This one's yellow and golden. This one is going to be pink and blue, yellow and green. And then this one here is actually a mixture of all of them. Now, if you look right here and you look back at these four shades we have swatched, which one do you think is my perfect undertone? I'm this one. Very cool, very pink, like a flamingo. These can actually help you learn your undertone. So if you want to make this shade more olive, add a little bit of that green. Now we have an olive undertone. Now stay tuned because I think these are going to be a great way to learn your undertone.